Hi and welcome back to this 360 degrees video full workflow tutorial. Now in the previous video we talked a little bit about how to use the GoPro NLE plugins into Adobe Premiere to patch a tripod. Now I want to talk a little bit more about how to use those plugins and how exactly do you work with 360 degrees video into Adobe Premiere. So let's do that. So here we have our uh, small mountain bike downhill project open in Adobe Premiere. Now I won't talk too much about how exactly do you create an edit uh, because well the recipe is pretty much the same for VR as it is for a traditional video. Uh, basically you want to have an engaging content, you want to have an engaging story. But there are a few things that are really specific to VR and those I want to talk about. Uh, the first thing uh, to mention uh, though is that to create a sequence you will basically uh, use the same process as you would for a traditional video except that the sequence is going to be much bigger. Um, basically here we are working in 4K, you can uh, go up to 8K if you have the footage that can uh, support that. Uh, in terms of creating an experience you have to remember that the viewer is going to be into a headset. Uh, you can sort of preview that using the GoPro VR player plugin for Adobe Premiere, which will open the GoPro VR player and allow you to uh, look at it um, into a 360 environment, uh, preview it even um, without having any render before. You can zoom out and zoom in um, the same way you would uh, with the traditional GoPro VR player when you are using it. Uh, on your computer with a rendered video and it is also compatible with the uh, Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Well, obviously on a Mac computer you would need uh, a developer's kit Oculus Rift and a specific SDK, uh, but on a PC any headset that's plugged into your HDMI cable is going to be recognized by the GoPro VR player and you will be able to have a look at your video in 360 in a headset without having done any rendering specifically for this. So this is a really nice way of working with your content and especially trying to uh, put as much people as possible inside a headset looking at your experience. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because a lot of the time when you are watching 360 degrees video, you find yourself trying to search for what you're supposed to look at. Where is um, the action happening? What is it that the director wanted me to see? And there are a few tips and tricks uh, that will help you work with that. Uh, the first one would be obviously sound cues. So even if you are not working with 360 degrees sound with spatialized audio, uh, you can still use some little sound cues. Um, for example, in the on the launch video, you have a very nice sound cue that is not spatialized audio. It's uh, regular sound, but it gives you a good indication of what are you supposed to look out, and you're gonna hear. you're gonna hear, you have the voice saying, okay, you got uh, Jesper on the left, he's gonna send it on this one. And even if you were looking uh, in another direction, you know that you are supposed to look left and to find the rider so that you can enjoy the fact that he's gonna take that massive jump. So those are really some little tricks that you can use to create an experience that's gonna be more, I would say, convenient for your viewers to watch. Another good way of uh, creating something like that is to get as much people in a headset looking at your experience as you can and trying to figure out where exactly are they looking. Because with the GoPro VR player, when you have a headset plugged in, you can uh, see what the people are looking at uh, on your computer screen. And then you can use the GoPro VR Horizon plugin to sort of rotate the sphere and make sure that the sequences match together. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, here we have this sequence when we have the two riders going by. So they are arriving here from the left and they will end up around here, which is the back of the video. So if we look here, they're going to st stop around here. Now, 
for the next sequence, I could rotate my sphere and ideally when I exported it, I started with my sphere with the action in the front. So if I have my riders going out here and the next and the next action is actually coming right from here, it's not going to be very convenient. The nice thing with a plugin like GoPro VR Horizon, you just drag it here and you can then rotate using the yaw control. You can then rotate the sphere to sort of make it match. And the idea here is that I'm going to have my action coming from this point. So we have our riders coming out of the screen on that cut around here. And in the next cut, we're going to grab them back exactly at the same point. And the nice thing with that shot, for example, is that the guys are going to go, the guy is going to jump over the camera. And if you're following him, well, he's going to go out of the screen right here, which is sort of in the middle. It's around this direction for the sphere. So the next shot, I can match what I want the people to look at and, and make sure that they are looking in the right direction for me. So this is one of the main usage of the GoPro VR Horizon plugin. It's the, the way you can do what we call choreographing the dance. It's you're going to be able to make sure that the movements of your audience, of the people watching the video are going to be uh, what you want them to be. It's a great way also to create some emotions because you can slow down some of the movements and accelerate, make them look right and left and right and left and then have them look in one direction to calm down the experience. And it's a great way to modulate that way the experience that the people are going to have. For, for basically anything else, uh, really, in terms of color grading and the way you would work with the sound, the timelines, and all of those things, uh, 360 video is nothing more than just a big video with a 2 by one ratio. So these are really the main, the main components. Though it has to be noted that there are some uh, difficulties in terms of inserting objects and logos and graphics uh, because those have to be distorted the appropriate way. Uh, but there are a few different options out there, uh, including some plugins for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. And there are some uh, tips and tricks and workarounds uh, that we will probably come back to at some point in a future tutorial. Another thing that you have to be careful about uh, when you are working into Adobe Premiere is that if you, uh, by mistake, uh, start moving around one of your sequence and it's not anymore exactly matching the, se the whole sequence settings, you are going to have some troubles. Um, if you look in the back here, just a slight uh, movement will create a black line in the back. Uh, it's the same thing if you have if your sequence is not exactly at the right size and the right scale, let's reinforce it a little so that we see it. Uh, you're going to see that you have a bend here, a line here um, that is really ugly. That also means that a lot of the transition you would normally use, like the wipes and things like that, will not work properly with 360 video. So you are going to have to be creative in terms of having and creating those nice transitions. And finally, what do you do once you have finished working on your sequence? You're going to open the uh, Adobe Exporter um, for a sequence that you would want to export maybe on uh, YouTube or Facebook. You're going to export it in H.264. You can start by with the match source I bitrate, select the name and the folder where you want to put it. And you can just click once on match source so you know that you have the right uh, settings and the frame rate is the one of your sequence. Uh, we do recommend trying as much as possible, having 60 frames per second, especially if you are going to have an experience that's going to be looked at in a headset. Uh, it's going to be much more uh, convenient and uh, a much better experience for your viewers. But sometimes you don't have really a choice and you have to go with 30 frames per second. Uh, there's one thing that you need to be wary about is that render at maximum depth and it's going to be exactly the same thing here with use maximum render quality uh, do sometimes create a black bar at the point where the, st the sphere stitches back on itself. So these two we do recommend not using those. 
Uh, and then in terms of settings of bit rates, uh, we tend to recommend a VBR2 pass with a target bit rate of 30 megabytes per second and a maximum of 60. This is sort of our go-to parameter if you, we want an export in H.264. Obviously, there are a lot of different ways to go about it. You can uh, pump up the quality a lot more in H.264. And also, obviously, we will uh, almost always export a, a Cineform or ProRes master uh, so that we have that maximum high quality, low compression file uh, that we can keep for our archi archives. But the last detail here in this export is uh, to tick video is VR. And in our case, we're going to select monoscopic uh, because this is not 3D 360. Um, if you were to export a 3D 360 video, a stereoscopic video, you would then choose exactly what type of setting. This will uh, inject the metadata that makes it recognizable by YouTube or Facebook as a 360 video. And that means that uh, you are not going to be broadcasting a, a full resolution equirectangular, but you are going to be broadcasting an actual 360 video recognized as such. And then you just have to click on export and select the place where you want to export it. So that's it for the moment with Adobe Premiere. Um, in the next tutorial, we will stay in Adobe Premiere, but we will uh, start reframing our video and uh, work with it to export a traditional video. See you then. Yeah, 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 yeah.